well as the curvilinear style of Art Nouveau. Bernard's signature serpentine style is also prevalent in paintings. One example, portrait of Sarah Bernard, created by Georges Clarin in 1876, shows the actress lounging on a plush red sofa, dressed in an ivory-colored dress, swirling around her. The dress is lined with white fur at the hem, sleeves and neck. Her curved body is positioned in an S shape completed by the curved body of the wolfhound at her feet. This portrait invites the viewer into a personal space of the star that audiences could not enter. It created a sensation at the Paris Salon in 1876, and later this idea of Bernard in an intimate personal space got reproduced in other paintings. In addition to being uh, a patron and muse inspiring many posters, paintings, and photographs. Bernard was also an artist in her own right. In the 1870s, she took up sculpture and then also tried her hand at drawing and painting. She found a large studio near the Place de Clichy in Montmartre, where she could practice arts and receive visitors at five every day. She used her friends as models for her work and marble bust of her sister Regine was accepted in the salon in 1875. She also took lessons from the sculptor Mathieu Messnier. In 1896, more of her works got accepted in the salon. And I just want to show you uh, a few of her sculptures so that you have a better idea of her sculpture work. Uh, this one is called Après la Tempête, After the Storm, from 1876. Another one is an inkwell uh, by Sarah Bernard, Self-Portrait as Sphinx, from 1880. And uh, this is probably her most uh, well-known uh, sculpture. It's a high-relief block of Ophelia, Death of Ophelia, uh, from 1880. Bernard also wanted to be presented to the public as an artist. An 1879 painting by Jules Bastien Lepage shows Bernard looking down at a statuette of her face as a reference to her profession and her efforts as sculptress. Another painting from 1879 by Marie Desiree Bourgoin shows her sc sculpting in her studio. There is a series of photographs she commissioned from photographer Achille Melandry which show her posing with different sculptures, such as a bust of herself and a sculpture of Medea. Another photograph shows her working on one of her paintings. In her atelier, she wore white silk trouser suit and matching shoes designed by herself and fashion designer, Charles Frederick Ward. A woman seen in men's clothes scandalized the world of that day. She was attacked by the press and important sculptors of the time, including Rodin. It was said that she was pursuing an inappropriate activity. However, Bernard was not one to shy away from the scandal. After all, she was a modern woman who pursued her own vacation of sculpting, traditionally associated with men in La Belle Epoque. She also brought her art collection on her extensive tours through Europe and the Americas to promote herself as an artist and to sell her artworks to admiring fans. During her travels, she made extensive use of photography. She circulated prints, postcards, and cigarette cards in great quantities, making her image known in every city she played. She had herself photographed in Paris, London, and New York, and went through the glass negatives very carefully, eliminating the ones she did not like. One of the best uh, examples of her publicity materials is a postcard puzzle produced in 1906. The puzzle consists of 10 postcards, um, each uh, showing Bernard in one of her dramatic roles. The 10 cards form an oversized image of Bernard in one of her most famous breeches role as the Duke of Reichstadt in Edmund Rostand's Le Glande. This photo puzzle effectively reinforced Bernard's image as the talented actress with many successful roles and her powerful and larger than life public persona. Bernard's talent of self-promotion and effective publicity tactics were very effective and her celebrity reached an unprecedented global status 
where foreign audiences in Europe and the Americas flocked to see her performances in French and journalists at home considered her a powerful ambassador of French culture abroad a national icon and a symbol of France. In conclusion, as demonstrated uh, through this presentation, Bernard's success in self-promotion was a result of her artistic vision and clever use of synthesis of the arts. She took advantage of the importance of the decorative arts in La Belle Epoque and transformed herself into a human work of art. She used the visual arts to shape and promote public appreciation of her creative persona and her art. She epitomized the epoch's investment in individualism, celebrity, entertainment, and spectacle. She had a high business acumen, refined artistic taste, and identification with modern culture, as she built her image by collaborating with the best artists of the period, such as Alphonse, Alphonse Mucha, George Fouquet, René Lalique, Paul Nadar, Napoleon Sarani, Georges Clarin, and many others. She took advantage of the new media of posters, photography, and film, whose easy reproducibility and mobility allowed Bernard a wider reach to the general public. She played an important role in the development of Art Nouveau, Art Nouveau style in France and personified it with her slim and elongated frame, serpentine lines, curly hair, sensuality, and exoticism. She skillfully fused fine arts with decorative arts in her public image through her affiliation with painting and sculpture, as well as fashion, jewelry, and interior design. Bernard also benefited from the apparent duality of her image during the time when women were, were viewed from two extremes of either the traditional woman or the new woman. She managed to sustain her image as the epitome of femininity and divine Sarah, despite being a modern independent woman and playing femme fatale roles on stage throughout most of her life. Bernard achieved an unprecedented level of celebrity and stardom by defying conventions and creatively crafting her image and identity as a modern work of art. Thank you for your attention.